how now brown cow mouth exercises let's go ladies and gentlemen are you ready for the overkill gaming setup 2021 because that's right it's not just a gaming build today oh no we're actually building a full gaming setup where everything is complete ball to the wall fully maxed out and i'm telling you it's gonna be a little bit crazy a massive thank you to both Gigabyte and NVIDIA for actually sponsoring this video and making it all happen. We do actually have the RTX 3080 Ti here and the screen we're going to be pairing it with is, well, it is just insane. To kick this build off, we are of course going to need some parts. And we start off with the motherboard and this is B550. It's the Gigabyte Aorus Pro AC. And the reason that we're using B550 is because we do want to go for a Ryzen chip, but then also just because B550 is pretty much the perfect platform for gaming really. As we know, Intel have some brilliant CPUs as well, but when we're looking really at the top end, then I don't think there's gonna be many people other than Intel that would contest that going for a Ryzen chip is gonna be your best bet. This is the Ryzen 9 59 100x and this is actually a 12 core cpu so if you're just building a price to performance gaming pc then you probably wouldn't be looking at this because as we've discussed in a different video that you can find in the top right corner of your screen this isn't the best for price to performance but this is pretty much the best for gaming performance don't get me wrong this isn't the cpu that most should go for but if you are building a 3080 ti gaming pc and you're looking to go as overkill as possible then the ryzen 9 is a brilliant choice i still don't really understand why they package these cpus like they do because most of this is actually air it's a bit of a lie I guess this is a form of protection but I think there's probably a better way of doing it but when it comes to Ryzen CPUs you really don't want to muck around because all of these pins on the back are really fragile and I have actually uh, bent some of them on a different CPU before and if you're lucky you can fix it but as I'm sure you know not everyone is very lucky the RAM that we're using is almost like a bit of a friend of the channel at this stage. We seem to use it quite often. This is the Trident Z Neo from G-Skill. As you can expect throughout this video, we are definitely going quite overkill. And as such, we have 32 gigabytes of the stuff here, which is going to give us a little bit extra performance in a couple of titles. But it is mainly just so we can do extra things on our PC at the same time. For storage, we are, of course, going for a Gen 4 drive. This one is from Sabrent. Again, quite a fan favorite on the channel here. This is the Rocket 4. Plus. This definitely isn't the absolute fastest Gen 4 drive you can get, but for the money, this is usually worth picking up because it's not always that much more expensive than the very best Gen 3 drives. This is the third video on the road that I've forgotten my screwdriver. As always, do make sure you put it in the top slot as it is the only one on this B550 board that will give you the proper speed. Make sure that you do use the supplied heatsink as these things do actually get very hot. Especially when you bear in mind this is going to go right next to the graphics card. Let's move this to one side and actually talk about the case itself. And this is one that you guys have genuinely been asking me to cover for so long. So I have actually had to take matters into my own hands and buy this myself. And for those not familiar, this is from Fractal Design. This is the Meshify C. I think one of the most popular cases that you can actually buy right now. And it's not only great for airflow, but it's also fantastic for styling. Because you've got this lovely diamond cut, or at least diamond appearance appearance to the mesh on the front. You've got a couple of fans fitted as standard as well. We will be removing one of these because we want to add some extra RGB bling. Drop the case on its side, grab our motherboard and just gently drop this into place. Look at this! Fractal Design actually tell you what all the screws are on the box. You don't need to look at the manual. How clear is that? Oh, okay. I'm not quite so impressed. They haven't included the standoffs as standard. Boo. With that in place, you can now get your first glimpse of what the system will look like. I think really well themed because I do love a white case, but personally speaking, I think that sometimes it can wash everything out a little bit if everything is white. So it's nice to have that mix of quite a dark black base, but then the whites around, it's something I quite like. How easy does the front come off? Well, you do need to remove this little dust filter first, then it should just pop off but you do have some connections at the top so you can't just rip this off and put it somewhere else it just rather conveniently blocks the view for you doesn't it i'm just removing the front fan and putting it a little bit further up we will unwrap our little bundle of joy at the back and plug in all of our front panel connections bundle of joy i haven't said that in ages but it's still quite funny 
Now we're ready for the power supply, and this one is a little bit older, but there are newer versions available. This is the RM850i from Corsair. And the reason that we've gone for this is not only because 850 watts should be more than enough for a 3080 Ti system, but because I also want to use these pretty cool custom braided cables. You can buy them in kits from places like Cable Mod, but what we've got here is actually from Corsair. This is the Pro PSU cable kit in black and white. We do a quick hack of plugging in our CPU power cable to the board first and then connect it to the power supply. Then we can slide this baby in. Up next, we have our all-in-one liquid cooler. Really important for a Ryzen 9 CPU as it does get hot. The one that we're using here today is the ML240 Illusion. And I've used this before and it really does look and work a treat. But the thing that you really do need to bear in mind about this case is that your best bet for thermals is to put a 240 up top or maybe a 120 at the back if you're using a lesser CPU. Because as soon as you start blocking off the front, it's just not gonna give you very good thermals for your graphics. Card. So we will screw the fans into place, make sure that everything actually fits properly, which it looks like it does. Add some thermal paste to the CPU, then just tighten it up by hand. Then we can add our final fan, that extra halo that will go at the rear. Cable management is getting a little bit tricky now, unfortunately. After fumbling around for probably about 15 minutes just to get that top RGB cable in, I think we've done it which does actually mean we are almost done. The last thing we need to do is actually to plug our graphics card in, which means grabbing our RTX 3080 Ti out of the box. This is the Gaming OC Edition, and we do actually have a slightly beefier cooler. This card looks to me as if it's actually gonna take up three slots, so it is pretty darn huge. And the reason behind this is pretty simple. It's just because this has to dissipate more heat. It is a more powerful graphics card. The reason that we're using the 3080 Ti here today, though, is pretty much just because it is the most powerful gaming graphics card, really, that you can get right now. You've got things like DLSS, you've got 12 gigabytes of VRAM, so if you want to play at 4K, which we will be doing, then you can pretty much fit all of the textures and all of the extra settings in there. And of course, you've got ray tracing, tensor cores. So if you do want to use this as a work machine as well, this is going to be one heck of a powerful system. Showing you guys round the back before we actually plug the final power supply cables in. You can see there definitely is a little bit of a cable mess at the top, but I haven't attempted to actually tidy that up yet. But round the side, I've been doing a bit of cable as you go, and you can see these grommets here and the channels really do help out. So let's feed the final cables through. We get it looking as neat as we can. And then I believe that should be our system pretty much complete. We've definitely managed to match the whole black and white theme actually, haven't we? The only thing obviously is this fan at the front. It would have been nicer if we'd had a bit more length to have fans down the side. This one you're probably gonna wanna swap out to like a Silent Wings Be Quiet fan or something a little bit later. But let's get this thing turned on and actually see if it works. This is the nerve wracking bit. Come on, please, please. Well, it's very quiet. That is a, a brilliant sign. But until we've got a signal on the screen, I'm not taking anything for granted. Hold on. Hold on. Surely. Surely. Thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and every time people say, oh, he's faking that. That's not his real reaction. Do you know the stress? of building a PC and turning it on for the first time. It's not nice. I'm pleased to say then that the PC actually works, but in order to create our full setup, we're gonna need a little bit of space. And we'll begin with a keyboard that I've actually had for a while, but haven't yet used. This is the K100. It certainly is uh, on the larger side, but it does, uh, it does look the part. You have this really cool little spinny wheel here at the top that you can use for various different things. But realistically, the reason that you'd be going for this is for that optical mechanical key switch and essentially this uses lights for the fastest actuation times but of course and being a realist here this isn't actually going to translate into you suddenly becoming an esports player overnight but it certainly is going to be a nice thing to have if you're going for a overkill setup we will also grab a mouse mat this one also rather on brand with some corsair the mouse that we're using here today is the logitech g pro this is actually a special edition that logitech supplied me for a sponsored thing a while ago but i love this it's really quite a funny story with this though because because Logitech genuinely seem to think that this color is called lime green, but it's about as yellow as I've ever seen. So where they've got that from, I have no idea. But these things are great because they fit so well in your hands. And if you do play a lot of first person shooters where you're doing a lot of flick shots and moving your mouse around a lot, then this is definitely something that does come highly recommended. But all of that pales in comparison to what is just sitting over here. And it has not been in frame yet. 
because it is absolutely ginormous. This is the brand new monitor from Gigabyte. This is the FV43U. This box is so big I can't even read it. This is where the standing desk comes in handy. We'll go for round three. Most awkward unboxing ever. Oh! Let's try not to break it in the process, but let's lay it down flat, add the feet, pick it back up again, and then reveal the monitor itself. <laughs> that is so big. This is a full 4K panel, quantum dot, uh, up to 144 hertz, which is pretty crazy, I guess, for a screen of this sort of size and resolution. But then it does also support display stream compression, so you're not having to worry about losing color information when you're running this at high refresh rates. But then it does also support HDMI 2.1 as well. So if you want to hook this up to like an Xbox Series X or a PS5, then it can do 4K 120. So all the bases are covered. Oh, and we are going to need a pair of headphones as well. I barely actually fit in this shot now. These are the ones that I personally use. They're the HS70. I've been using them for years, actually. They're not even that expensive. You could upgrade to something like the Virtuoso from Corsair, if so desired. But to be honest, for the money, I think these are great. Here we are then, the biggest setup I've ever put together, not just in terms of screen size, but also the PC itself. Everything here is geared towards 4K gaming, so let's give it a go. Before we do that, I probably should actually talk about the finished PC itself. And now that everything is actually fully assembled and properly working, I think we can sit back and admire the work for a second. It really is a very well-themed PC. The biggest thing that you do need to watch out for though is with radiators. As we have it here is the perfect configuration. Please don't try and put something at the front of this case because if you are using a big graphics card, it's not only gonna cause you clashes in terms of room, but also in terms of thermals. You don't wanna be chucking a load of heat in there. And I guess the other thing is with the RAM, we have populated all of the slots. So if you're someone that wants to upgrade to 64, maybe in a couple of years time, you'd have to place the whole kit. But anyway, let's talk gaming performance. Let's begin our tests at 4K absolute max settings of one of my favorite games, Horizon Zero Dawn. This is the Frozen Wilds expansion. And this is an absolutely ridiculously difficult game to drive at 4K, but you can see we're hitting that magical 60 FPS and getting a fair bit more change as well. And of course, don't forget that this is a high refresh rate display, so we are actually able to use those extra frames as well. The monitor's hooked up by HDMI here. We've got this running at 144 Hertz over HDMI 2.1, and it works great. Next up, we have some cyberpunk and we're going to set this to ray tracing ultra and make sure that DLSS is set to automatic. I was about to start by talking about the performance but having a screen this big, say what you will about it being this close to you, the amount of detail you can see not only at 4k but in cyberpunk there's so much going on, it really is an absolute joy to play. In terms of those all important numbers though, you can see we are hitting that magical 60 FPS in probably what is the most demanding game on PC right now. But regardless, 62 FPS at absolute max settings, 4K, DLSS, ray tracing, ultra, everything. This really is an absolutely insane experience. I imagine that for a game like Forza Horizon, you're probably going to want to use a controller. And you can actually connect it over Bluetooth, but I prefer to use one of these. It's a little Xbox controller adapter. Once again, we'll be running this at 4K resolution, and usually I would use the Ultra presets, but did you know that if you go into the custom settings, there is actually extra settings so you get better than Ultra? Don't tell me how that works. Shadow quality, extreme! And so here we are then, driving through the lovely Edinburgh at better than all console level settings. Series X eats your heart out. I assume we just have a little bit more detail in the reflections and in terms of draw distance and things. And yet that's not stopping us from getting over 140 frames a second. We are getting the absolute most out of this display. The game looks gorgeous. Forza Horizon 5 is coming very soon and I honestly can't wait. But let's press on to our final game, the fan favourite, some Apex Legends. Let's drop. Stop, drop and roll. No, that's fire safety. Apex Legends is a game that's actually equipped with Nvidia's Reflex technology, which is really useful if you do want to play at 4K because it reduces the latency, which definitely can get a little bit on the higher side if you don't turn it on at 4K resolution. Of course, this usually wouldn't be a huge issue because you wouldn't be playing at 4K for something competitive because you'd be throwing away FPS. 
but if you look at the top right corner of your screen, 130 frames a second at absolute max settings in Apex Legends. You are going to want to use all of that resolution to your advantage, because you've got such a huge screen, you can see properly into the distance, but you're not having to worry about fluidity. This is a super responsive panel, which is quite surprising actually for such a huge monitor. Personally speaking, I'm a huge fan of ultrawide. I think I always have been and always will be. But every time I bring this up, there is so many people that swear by using a large monitor and say that once you get used to it, you really wouldn't want to go back. I think this is going to be more geared towards, I guess, more entertainment first type people that want to use this with a console and maybe use a controller a lot of the time, but then use a mouse and keyboard for things like Apex. But ultimately, let me know down in the comment section below. What size monitor do you have now? Would you want to upgrade to a screen this size? Or would you go for something like I have, an ultrawide? I would uh, love to hear from you. So there we are then, our go big or go home overkill gaming setup. And there's not really that much to dislike about it to be honest, other than one thing, and that would be thermals and acoustics. Because don't get me wrong, noise levels, they're not too bad for such a compact system, but in terms of temperatures on that CPU, it's not quite as low as I would like. We actually saw it hitting around about 90 degrees. I will say that I have overly aggressively tuned this for noise, so I definitely do need to go back into the BIOS and tweak it a little bit and we can get this down. But then of course the PC will be a little bit louder. If you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured in this setup, then of course as always you can find my Amazon affiliate links listed down below. But thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed it, it honestly helps out so much. Get yourself subscribed for more just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.